On Monday, we finally heard from Joe Biden for the first time since March 17th, which is when he gave a really unusual victory speech after winning three more primaries. And in case you missed it, this is how that went. Oh, <laughs> thanks, thanks, thanks. Okay. You doing okay? Yeah? Need any help? <laughs> now, before that weird thing that happened, I don't even know how to describe it, the last time we heard from him was when he did this virtual town hall on COVID-19, and as The Verge's McKenna Kelly describes, it was a technical nightmare, and if you watched it live, parts of it just didn't work, like the audio was cutting out, and then other parts of it, his brain wasn't working, he was wandering off the screen, it was just a complete mess. Oh. No exception. That's why we're connecting virtually today. We're going to have to get better at the technical side of this. No president can promise to prevent future outbreaks. But I can promise you that when I'm president, I'm able to prepare better, respond better, and cover better. Science. Was, I was one of the sponsors of the Endangered Species Act. And one of the other things we've done is we in the state of Delaware, for example, set up the coastal zone legislation, which means that they can't build any factories or any, any, anything within one mile of the estuary of the Delaware River and the Atlantic Ocean and the Chesapeake. And so but the whole point of this is that we can do a lot to deal with endangered species. And one of the things I would like to raise is that we have to deal with this on an international basis as well. Yeah. So, look, I understand that it's his team's strategy to hide him away from the public. I get that. I think it's actually a smart strategy, and they executed it well throughout the course of the primary. But you're the frontrunner now. You will very likely be the Democratic Party's nominee. And Donald Trump is bungling his response to COVID-19. So this is a political opportunity. Like, you can step up and be the leader that Americans are looking for currently and I get that he's prone to fuck-ups, and his staff still wants to hide him. But regardless, I mean, you have to be the leader. You wanted to be president. You still do, I'm assuming. So step up. The mere fact that he hasn't shown his face, it's giving people who uh, propped him up, members of the Democratic Party elite and their loyalists, a little bit of buyer's remorse because they're realizing... Maybe we made a mistake. For example, Daily Coast founder Marcos Melitzas tweeted, Why isn't Biden leading the Democratic response to coronavirus every single day? Why cede the ground to Trump's propaganda? If Biden won't do it, make it Warren. Just find someone. Yeah, well, I mean, this is your guy. This is who you all propped up. So, um, you made your bed. Lie in it. Now, what he's missing here is that there actually is someone who is stepping up. Bernie Sanders. He mobilized his base of small donors to raise $2 million for coronavirus relief efforts. But the problem is that Bernie's bad and everyone else is good. So the media, they can't actually give Bernie Sanders credit for this because the primary isn't technically over. And if they give him too much credit, then voters might see that he's actually a better leader than Joe Biden and opt for him in the remaining primaries. So they're just ignoring that. And as a result, um, Joe Biden is ceding ground to Donald Trump. I agree with Marcos Melitzis there. Never thought I'd say that. And what's interesting is that the individual on the Democratic Party side who is the most visible at this time is New York Governor Andrew Cuomo. And he's just there. Like, people are gravitating towards him because he's on TV, and it seems as if he's exhibiting leadership qualities. Now, I think that he's botched the COVID response because he waited too long to enact all of these measures that he needed to enact. I mean, it's, it's a little too late, right? But I mean... The fact that he's present and it seems like he's doing something, even if his response is inadequate, he's just there. So it led to the Democratic Party's base uh, really wanting him to be the president, not Joe Biden, because President Cuomo started trending on Twitter and um, <laughs> uh, just days before, where's Biden was trending on Twitter. So do you understand? Like, Joe Biden is basically about to wrap up this primary when more votes take place if we continue on this path with his momentum. 
and Democrats are already looking elsewhere for leadership. That's a really, really bad sign because it shows you that Joe Biden may have even less support than Hillary Clinton had. In fact, I would guess that he had less, he has less support than Hillary Clinton had. So, I mean, you, you can't just go MIA for six days straight if you are likely to be the Democratic Party's nominee and we have this global crisis. What are you doing? You can't retreat to your house. You have to come out and be a leader. Say something. But don't worry, because um, he did speak up. He gave us a sign that he's still alive. Because, yes, there are people that were, you know, at first jokingly saying, hey, where's Joe Biden? Is he still alive? Maybe he should take a picture with the current newspaper. But then, you know, on day four, day five, people started to get a little bit more serious and ask, wait, is Joe Biden still alive? Like, literally? Um, but rest assured, because his staff, his press secretary, Simone Sanders, did let us know that he never left us because he made an epic appearance during DJ D-Nice's Instagram live stream, and he dropped an epic thumbs up. Nice. Now, I know what you're thinking. Simone Sanders probably just logged in to Joe Biden's official Instagram account, sent the thumbs up emoji, and then screenshotted it, and then shared it to Twitter. I know. <laughs> but, you know, um, finally, he did make his triumphant return, or not-so-triumphant return, on the 23rd, but not before providing us with an excuse as to why he wasn't present more often. He told ABC News that he was setting up a home studio to do more regular broadcasts. Quote, the bottom line is that everything from providing better access to where I physically live and be able to broadcast from there, as well as our headquarters, is underway. We've hired a professional team to do that now, Biden told reporters. It's a little above my pay grade as to how we do that, but that's desperately what we're trying to do because I want to be in daily or at least, you know, significant contact with the American people and communicate what I would be doing, what I think we should be doing, and how we should be doing it. But I promise you that's on the way. Hopefully, God God willing, by Monday. A source with knowledge of the campaign said Biden's team is working on scaling up that infrastructure and dealing with the realities of Biden's Wilmington home, like the fact that there aren't particularly high ceilings, which can make lighting a challenge. Oh, okay, that makes sense. So the reason why he's gone MIA for six days is because uh, they couldn't get the lighting right. He could have gone on CNN, MSNBC, I'm sure they would have loved to hear from you. No, you know, it was because he's setting up this new home studio and it's so difficult to get the lighting right. You know, uh, forget the fact that Bernie Sanders hosted a fireside chat just using ordinary lamps while Joe Biden, you know, uh, had a whole team and they couldn't even get basic lighting figured out. But I mean, during a crisis, there's no excuse. Like, we should be hearing from you regularly if you want to convince the American people that you are the better leader now. Like, that's what you're doing. That's the campaign right now. We're not talking about anything but COVID-19 because this is what is affecting people's lives the most. So you have to be a leader. You have to assure them that we're going to be okay. We're going to make it through this. But the fact that you went missing, that's just not a good look. Like, do you not want to win? Like, I have my doubts that he even wants to beat Donald Trump because if you do something like this, it just it, it's idiotic. I mean... Turn on your phone. You don't need the perfect setup. Just turn on your phone, hit record, and then upload that to YouTube. And if you don't know how to do that, have one of your team members do it for you. Have one of your grandchildren do it for you. The granddaughter that he kisses on the mouth looks young enough, so I mean, I'm sure that she'd know how to do it. This isn't hard. Just figure it the fuck out. But regardless, I mean, it took six days, but we still heard from him. And um, it went about as well as you would expect any Joe Biden live stream to go. His teleprompter malfunctioned, and um, <laughs> just watch. My principal focus today and every day will be on what we should do to get this response fixed to save lives, to provide economic assistance to the tens of millions of Americans who need it and they need it now and are going to need it in the weeks and months ahead. It starts with adopting a mindset of real urgency. For too long, the warning signs were ignored. We need to activate the reserve corps of doctors and nurses and beef up the number of responders dealing with the crush, these crush of cases. And, uh, and in addition to that, uh, in addition to that, we have to uh, make sure that we, uh, we are in a position that we are, well, let me, let me go to the second thing. I've spoken enough on that. The president must use the Defense Production Act 
to radically increase the supply of critical goods needed to treat patients and protect our healthcare workers and first responders, including the protective gear like face masks and critical equipment like ventilators so desperately needed in our hospitals. It means working with all our allies and partners to get supplies from overseas when available, dispatching U.S. military assets to retrieve them quickly if they are available. It means federal coordination of the supply chains to accelerate deliveries and get them to the right places at the right time, and much more. And we need to build an arsenal of democracy in, as we did in 1940. We can take, we, we, we can make a personal productive equipment. Look, here's the deal. We have to do what we did in the 40s and the 20s, and the 2020s. And we can do that. We need to build a medical arsenal here. Unfortunately, as of last night, President Trump and Mitch McConnell were offering a plan to let big corporations off the hook. They proposed a $500 billion slush, slush fund for corporations with almost no conditions. Under their plan, the Trump administration could even allow companies to use the money that they're be being given to them by taxpayers' money to buy back stocks, increase executive pays, if that's what the Secretary of Treasury decided. They wouldn't have to make commitments to keep workers employed, these big corporations. They wouldn't have to tell the American, the Americans where the money goes for months. <coughs> now, in case you were wondering, this is the like to dislike ratio on that video. <laughs> and um, his other streams aren't that different. And just right off the bat, I have a couple of questions. First of all, why did you use a green screen setup like that's now I can understand why it was more difficult to get the lighting correct. Like just go by a window and film. So you made it more difficult on yourselves. And second of all, why is the ticker on the bottom of the screen static? Why isn't it like scrolling? Why do you have parts of it cut off? If you're not going to make it scroll like there are so many questions and it's still difficult for me to believe that he had a team set this up. But still, you know, I'm not going to take issue with the substance because I do think that if you just strip away all of the malfunctions, you know, the brain farts, the substance was okay. You know, he called on Trump to fully utilize the Defense Production Act. He was right to call for more tests and to condemn Donald Trump's slow response. But saying the right thing alone, it isn't enough. And he did make some good points. And, uh, you know, this needed to to be said. He said that, you know, the Republican Party, they're just passing a bill that is corporate welfare. It's tantamount to corporate welfare because they're bailing out the companies, the large multinational corporations, and they're not looking at helping workers enough. But, you know, when you're trying to prove who's the real leader, you also have to propose solutions. And the thing about Joe Biden is that, you know, he hasn't talked much about policy. He's had nothing but platitudes. And you can condemn Donald Trump and the Republicans. But if you don't come with your own solution, then none of this means anything. Like, you can criticize what Donald Trump is doing, but you have to offer solutions. That's part of proving that you're the better leader. But this is his solution to, you know, corporate welfare. On Sunday, his campaign tweeted, I am calling on every CEO in America to publicly commit now to not buying back their company's stock over the course of the next year. As workers face the physical and economic consequences of coronavirus, our corporate leaders cannot cede responsibility for their employees. Yeah, that's not good enough. You're running to be the president. So you should call on Congress to enact legislation that bans them from buying their stock back. Like, the fact that this is legal should be an outrage to everyone, but for you to just say, oh, I'm calling on them to not do this. I'm calling on these private companies with a fiduciary responsibility to increase shareholder value at all costs, to just do the right thing, do the moral thing, think ethically for once. I mean, how is this different than when Hillary Clinton said, I went to Wall Street and I said, you cut it out. It's not. This is feckless leadership. So, I mean, not only is he showing to all of us that he doesn't have what it takes to lead at a moment when Americans are looking for anyone to be a leader, hence why President Cuomo was trending, but he doesn't even offer us solutions. Now, look, maybe I'm being too unfair to Joe Biden. Maybe I'm being as unfair to him as MSNBC is to Bernie Sanders. But I'm sorry, you had a chance for real leadership in this country. We, we could have got Bernie Sanders... And they opted for this guy, 
who struggles to articulate himself, who can barely spit out a coherent sentence, who went MIA for six days. That's who we're supposed to look to as the alternate to Donald Trump, who's having a meltdown and still throwing temper tantrums and refuses to be a leader. Like, the situation is so grim in America because we have Donald Trump, dipshit, or Joe Biden, dipshit. Which melting brain boomer do you want? The orange one or the white one? Pick one. I mean, that that's the options that we're presented with. So I'm sorry that I feel a little bit more uh, or sound a little bit more pessimistic than usual to be specific. But I mean, the situation just sucks. And, you know, the Democratic Party loyalists who are only now seeing it, who are only now experiencing buyer's remorse, maybe you should have listened to us all along when we warned you about Joe Biden. Maybe, you know, Obama, who decided to make everyone get out of the race, convince them to drop out to endorse Joe Biden, maybe he should be a leader. Step up. We know that you did this, Obama. Come out of hiding. You wanted Joe Biden. This is your guy. So step up. Because we need some alternative to Donald Trump. And Joe Biden just isn't that. He's bungling it. So somebody on the Democratic Party side, take responsibility for this. This is the mess that you created once again.